Welcome to DeepX. In this training video we will show you how you can add or delete walls in a specific design section, what are the different project types that DeepX can analyze, and we will also show you how to define the wall properties and how to edit the wall sections. In DeepX you can use up to two walls in the same design section. This means that you can either have one wall just to excavate on either wall side, support it with tiebacks, support it with struts, with rakers, or you can also press this button to add a second wall to the model. If a second wall is added, then you can choose to excavate between the two walls, you can support them with tiebacks, you can connect the walls with struts, with concrete slabs, you can have them connected with a tie rod, backfill and excavate on one side creating a dead man wall or you can have them connected with tie rods excavate on both sides creating a bin type wall all these different models can be created by this option with use of one or two walls in the same design section up here we can see the surface elevations next to the wall and the water elevations in order to set our water table so here we can see the earth elevations on the left, center and right side of the walls and here we can see the water elevations respectively. If I choose to use one wall, so if I press this button the second wall will be deleted, then we can see that these options change and now I will have only left and right side of the wall. In DPEX you have to define your initial wall type and your initial wall section. This means that you have to say if this is a soldier pile wall, a seat pile wall, a second pile wall, whatever it is, and you also have to define the initial structural section of it. Later, after you analyze the model, uh, the software will give you very detailed results, structural ratios, etc. that can help you um, decide if this section is enough, if it is too much, if you need to do any modifications so you can optimize the model manually or you can use the software optimization tools in order to allow the software to optimize it for you but you have to start with something. To define your wall section and your wall type you have to double click on the wall. Here you can define a name of the specific wall in the specific design section you can select a structural section for your wall. Uh, here you can define the top of the wall elevation if it follows the ground surface elevation or if it is above or below the ground surface. In example, I can change this to uh, 4 feet, press OK, and we can see that the wall moves uh, to the top. I double click again and I can change to the same ground uh, surface elevation that it was before. Also, here we can decide we can define the initial wall depth. This is the initial wall depth and it will be used uh, in the model analysis. Uh, if you do limit equilibrium analysis, the software will calculate and show you the calculated wall embedment safety factors. Based on these safety factors, you can either design man decide manually if you wish to do any modification uh, to increase or decrease the wall depth. You can double click on the wall change the wall depth and run the analysis in some seconds you will have your new results or you can ask the software optimization tools to optimize the wall depth for a required wall amendment safety factor that you can import. Finally here we can see the top of the wall, the top left point of the wall, X wall coordinate actually. Uh, when we have one wall this is at zero if I have a second wall, this will represent the X coordinate of the top left point of my right wall. This way I can define the distance between the two walls. Now about the structural section, here is a list of available sections you can access anytime and use. By default it includes only one called wall 1, which is actually this seat pile wall AZ26. So I press this button in order to edit the structural section of the wall. In the dialog that appears here, I can edit wall 1, which is the same wall 1 in this drop-down, and I can also add as many wall sections as I wish in this list. You can access the different wall sections and modify them independently. 
For each one of them, you have initially to define the wall type. So these here are lists that expand, and here there are buttons that we can press. So you can choose to have a soldier pile lining wall with reinforced concrete piles, with H beams, pipes, pipes filled with concrete, double or single channels, plain concrete piles or timber piles. You can have a seat pile wall, uh, a second pile wall, uh, reinforced concrete or steel reinforcement, a tangent pile wall. Uh, with all these kinds of supports again, a diaphragm slurry wall, reinforced concrete, or an SPTC wall with steel reinforcement. You can have a custom wall if you wish to simulate something that we might not include. You can define uh, the section stiffness and you can import it on your own instead of allowing the software to calculate it for you. Uh, we have combined seat pile wall sections, H beams, double H beams, or pipes combined with seat piles and box seat piles. These are the available sections in our software program, the available wall types. So I'll go now to different wall sections here in this list and I will show you how to edit different wall types. In the first one I will use this uh, soldier pile and lagging wall with uh, H beams. In new wall one, so actually excuse me, I'll go to wall one and I will change this to uh, soldier piles. So I'll go to new wall one and I will rename this to secant and I will show you how to use uh, a reinforced concrete secant pile wall perhaps. In new wall two I will leave the initial selection of the software to show you uh, the seat piles. In any case uh, this will cover uh, most of uh, the cases in our software program. So I'll go to the first one Whenever you have any wall type with H beams or pipes or rectangular hollow sections or channels, then you simply have to go to the steel beams tab and right within the software we include extensive databases with commonly used uh, H beams, pipes, rectangular hollow sections, channels, etc. So you simply have to access this drop down and you can select your section from the list. Let's say this W21101 for this example. So all the properties of uh, the specific H beam are already passed within the software and they are loaded as soon as you select uh, the section from the list. Next thing, if you have soldier pile and lagging walls, no matter what's the uh, pile type, you have to go to the lagging tab. Here you can define uh, if you have timber lagging, concrete lagging or steel plate lagging. If you have timber lagging, you have to define the lagging thickness and where to position the lagging on the center of the wall, left side, outside the pile face, inside the flange or right side. This is mostly graphical uh, for the sketches later. It doesn't make really uh, a big difference in the analysis. Uh, if you have concrete lagging, you have to define the structural section of your concrete lagging. If you edit this, you can define uh, the lagging material, uh, the thickness of the section, uh, and how many rebars and of what rebar size you have within this distance that you can set here as a panel. In the steel plate lagging you have to define again the lagging thickness and the material property for uh, the steel plate lagging. Anyway I will choose deeper lagging for this one and finally if you go to the wall type again uh, here you can define the horizontal distance, the horizontal spacing between your uh, piles. So I'll go here and I will type 8 feet. So every 8 feet I will have uh, an uh, H beam uh, W21 and I have timber lagging. So if I go to the draw tab I can see the section as uh, with all the changes that I have just done. I'll go back uh, this is now, let's say, a driven pile. Uh, there is no concrete cover uh, around the pile below the excavation, but if you wish to place it in a board hole below the excavation, then you can simply go here where it says width. Uh, you can access this and you can type your hole diameter, let's say 2.5 feet. So if I go once again here to the draw tab, I can see that it created uh, the holes below the excavation can uh, with concrete cover to surround the H beam. Finally, here we have to define the passive, active and water widths. 
these are the widths that will be taken into consideration below the excavation where there is no lagging for the calculation of the passive, active and water pressures respectively. If you press this question mark, then this appears and this explains the theory that uh, when you have piles uh, you have to define for the active and water pressures below the excavation uh, this as the pile width or the flange size if you have driven piles um, and for the active and water pressures and for the passive side for the passive pressures you have to define 2.5 to 3 times the pile diameter or flange uh, for continuous walls like diaphragms, uh, second piles etc uh, you simply have to set the same uh, wall spacing for all active water and passive pressures so if I press OK in my case uh, that I have created this pile around uh, the H-beam I would have to go here to the active and water pressures and type 2.5 one time the pile diameter and I would have to go to the passive side and say uh, let's say 7.5 uh, three times the pile diameter. This value is limited by the spacing so uh, if this would uh, uh, be more than the spacing I would use the spacing with this limitation. Uh, I'll go to the second uh, wall section that I created. Uh, here I have a reinforced concrete second pile. So instead of uh, having the steel beam tab now I have the concrete rebar tab where I can define uh, the diameter of the pile, let's say 24 inches and I can say how many rebars and of what rebar size I have per pile so let's say uh, 6 number 7's and I can choose number 4 uh, every uh, 6 inches or something uh, as a shear reinforcement and if I go to the draw tab I can see now uh, how this changed uh, the reinforcement changed according to my selections here in the wall type uh, I can set the spacing for every other reinforced pile, uh, the pile width once again, and as you see I leave the same spacing for the passive, active and water widths because I have a continuous wall. There are some advanced options here, you can select uh, the unreinforced piles if they have a different size, then you can access it and you can type something else here. So if I type let's say uh, 1.5 and if I 1.5 excuse me and if I go now to the draw tab I can see that the unreinforced piles have a different uh, size I go back and change to 2 to have the same everywhere and I can also choose here if I have multiple unreinforced piles so now every other pile will have the reinforcement but I can choose that the unreinforced piles are more than one perhaps two or three so if I select something and go to the draw tab I can see uh, that I have now two unreinforced piles uh, between the um, uh, reinforced ones. Of course I have to adjust uh, the spacing now. I'll unselect it and this is my original situation to have reinforcement every other pile. Uh, this is for second piles. Finally if I go to the new wall 2 which I can select uh, to name it let's say seed piles seed pile uh, here in uh, Deep X we have an extensive database with commonly used seed pile sections. So you can access it and you can select any section you might need. We have uh, several sections from several manufacturers and I will change this one to be AZ17. Uh, if I go to the seed pile tab I can see the seed pile sections uh, properties uh, of the section that I just uh, selected. Anyway, I will press OK and this updated here my list of wall types, of wall sections and I can choose anyone I wish to assign for this specific wall. This way I can access different walls if I have an opposite wall I can access it and I can assign the same or a different wall section and I can do the same in different design sections. I can access a wall there and I can select something different. This way you can assign different structural sections on different walls uh, around your project. Visit our websites in order to review additional information or software programs, useful theory documents, examples and training videos. 
if you wish to receive our pricing special offers or if you wish to arrange a free online presentation feel free to contact us thank you for watching this video